Hello, and we are live. I am David, and I'm also known as the Critter Keeper, and today I'm going to show you a few of the animals I have in my care. Now, I have been the Critter Keeper for the best part of almost eight years, and I travel around the northeast of Scotland with my animals to schools and nurseries to educate children. Now, the reason why I do this is because I, I love animals and love all animals, and unfortunately, a lot of the animals that I have in my care are ones that people don't like, and that kind of makes me sad. So I do what I do to educate people, to show people that these animals are cool and amazing and then you make me learn something and realise how important they are because they're, they're here for a reason, they've all got their own little jobs to do and that's what I do, is to, to tell people about them so that they can learn about them and maybe enjoy them as, just as much as I do. Okay, and um, now I have been keeping exotic animals for the best part of almost 30 years so um, I, enjoy, I really enjoy doing what I'm doing. Uh, so the first step, we're going to have a look at a few of the animals today and you'll quickly realise um, what um, this topic is going to be about today. Um, you're not going to see obviously all the animals that I have, but I will show you throughout the week. Um, you'll see pretty much you know, all the animals um, you know, over the coming weeks. So it's, I hope you enjoy seeing that and tune in and enjoy it. Um, now I know that there's a lot of people going to be asking me questions. Now I can't... Uh, answer them because my phone is being used for filming but if you have a question about anything you can write it down uh, in the comments section and then after the live stream I will go through them and I'll answer all your, your, your questions um, as best I can uh, and then I'll maybe even keep some for tomorrow uh, to answer them live as well. Alright so let's start with our first uh, animal I'm going to show you today. Okay now this is pretty cool because in this box, a lot of you guys that you know obviously follow me and uh, go to schools and all the kids will know this is this is Mr. Tickles. So you want to come in a little bit closer, Mackenzie, and um, we can have a look at Mr. Tickles here. So Mr. Tickles is a, a giant uh, Madagascan hissing cockroach. So that's a very large species of cockroach which is found in Madagascar. Now, sadly, whenever I mention the word cockroach, adults especially. They tend to make silly faces and funny noises, they're like, mm, they're disgusting. But they're not actually disgusting animals, these guys are actually quite clean. Yes, we can sometimes find the cockroach in a disgusting place, but that doesn't make the animal disgusting. The reason why we have cockroach on our planet is because they are basically the janitors of the world. So they clean up, they clean up the environment. And this particular species of cockroach, it's only found in the rainforest of Madagascar, and actually helps keep the rainforest clean. So they eat the leaves and other debris that fall off the trees, down onto the forest floors where they recycle uh, back into the leaf and, and leaf litter back into the soil to help fertilize other plants and trees to grow. So actually what you call biobug is very very cool um, for the ecosystem of a rainforest. Now he does belong to the largest group of animals on our planet. We commonly like to call them bugs or a really good Scottish word beasties. Now all bugs or beasties have one thing in common and that's what makes them different to us and other animals like cats and dogs. And that is, they don't have a backbone, okay? So no spinal column. And um, so they're scientifically called invertebrates, or inverts for short. Now, 97% of all the animals on the planet are inverts. That's a huge amount of animals. So we've got to break them all down into lots of different groups. So we do have a bug table. So the main group of bugs on our bug table are called arthropods. Now, arthropod in Latin means jointed leg, okay? All arthropods have jointed legs and also a hard outer shell called an exoskeleton. Now what is pretty cool, you can see one of the cockroaches there trying to escape. But if you can see in there, can you see if you come in a bit closer here, Mackenzie, you can see down here we have like a cockroach that's white. Yeah? Someone just asked that. Yeah, yeah, it's white. Now this is pretty cool, it's not an albino or anything like that. Here is its skin, right? And this is the exoskeleton and this is pretty cool because I didn't plan this. Um, I put a couple of these guys in this tub this morning. And as he's been in there, he's actually shed his exoskeleton. Now, I was going to explain this tomorrow when we're speaking about spiders, which I'll, I'll go into. I'll go into detail with that when we speak about that as well. But it's pretty cool. You can see that he's he's come out of his old skin, so it's there, and he's this is his new exoskeleton, um, and he's going to harden up and he'll change back into the same colour as the rest of them. Okay, which is it's pretty pretty neat. Okay, so there we go. So arthropods. Um, <clears throat> Obviously, the, the uh, jointed legs and the hard outer shell, so that's an arthropod. 
the arthropods are broken into lots of different groups and the, the main group and the, the, make, the group that makes up the most arthropods are insects. Now he's an insect, okay? And I know he's an insect just by looking at him. And that's because I count his legs. So one, two, three, four, five, six. He's got six legs. All insects have six legs. Some insects can fly. So things like bees, butterflies, wasps, ladybirds, they still have six legs. The only arthropods on the planet that can fly are actually insects, okay? None of the other arthropods can actually fly, it's just the insects. So six legs, that's the best way to tell about an insect, okay? Now let's, I'm gonna put this guy away for now and, and we're gonna have, a, I'm gonna have a look and I'm explain to you about insects and how you identify them, not just only by the legs, but here, I've drawn myself an ant, okay? Let's call him Adam. Adam ant, right? <laughs> six legs, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Now, insects all have three body parts as well. So they have a head, they have a thorax, which is the middle part, and they have an abdomen. So there we go. All insects also have segments in the abdomen. Okay, so that's why I've drawn lines on all insects. And that's actually how it gets the name insects. It's actually a Latin from insectum, which means basically noticeable segments, something along those lines. Okay, and um, so that's why it's, it's, they're called insects. Now, so three body parts, head, thorax, abdomen. Majority of insects also have antennae. The feelers at the top, but there are other bugs that have antennae too. So that's not the best way to, to identify an insect. It's the six legs. Now a lot of children ask me about things like blood. You know, do insects have blood? Technically, they don't. And um, they have something called uh, hemolymph, and that's a liquid that it's similar to blood. It works the same kind of way, and it travels around the inside of the insect's body. Now we have what you call a closed circulatory system, which means we have our heart and our hum heart pumps our blood around our body um, via blood vessels and, and, and arteries and such. Well, insects, they actually do have a heart and their heart travels the entire length of its body. Okay, and this heart has little vents in it. And what it does is it pumps blood or hemolymph around its body and it goes around and it comes back in again, and it goes around, and it comes back in again. So it's an open circular system. And if you were to see the, the hemolymph inside it, liquid, it's not red like ours, because it lacks the same properties of our blood. That's why you can't technically call it blood. And it's actually, it can be quite clear, or it can be a brownish kind of liquid. But they do have a heart, okay, as well. So that's, that's, the, other, that's the other thing. And it is, like they also say, is it cold-blooded? Well, because they're not cold-blooded animals, but they, the, the hemolymph is cold. And that's why insects, you get bigger insects in hotter countries because um, just the same along the lines of reptiles, the more, the hotter they are, the more active they become. That's why you can sometimes find, um, you know, dead, well, you think they're dead, but flies on your windowsill, not all the time they're actually dead. They're actually just too cold, so they're inactive. But if you take them in your hand and warm them up, they can actually almost magically come alive. But they're just, you're heating them up in your hand. Okay? Uh, but that's not all, because sometimes you do find dead flies in your, in your window. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's that. So there we go. That is um, to explain a little bit about um, the inside of an insect. All right. Now you get loads of different types of insects. There are actually around about between six to 10 million different types of insect. Now that's not just like numbers of individual insects, that's the, just the type of insect. So that's what makes up the biggest and most amount of, uh, of animals on the planet. 50% of all living creatures are actually insects, which is pretty impressive. And they all have really, really important jobs to do. And um, not a lot of people realize, but insects are, actually an insect is the most dangerous, one of the insects is actually the most dangerous animal on the planet. And people are like thinking, what? Well, no, things like sharks or you know tigers and, and lions can be quite dangerous but they're they're not responsible for killing millions of people every year but an insect is and that is the mosquito in some countries the mosquito can carry horrible disease like malaria yellow fever and the zika virus and um, so 
that's how they can be responsible for, for lots of deaths. So, um, they're, but they're all important, especially uh, pollinating insects, so bees and butterflies, which help with plants and flower growth as well. So it's really important too. Now I'm going to show you um, another. Put this down. I'm going to show you some another in, uh, cockroaches here now, because this is the cockroaches that. Now I'm not going to take these guys out. See how they're pretty fast. But if you come in a little bit closer, Mackenzie, you can have a see. These are your common roaches, okay? These are actually W roaches. So these are the ones that you're more likely to see on holiday okay now cockroaches can carry disease as well only one percent of the cockroach population is considered a pest and um, but the, the rest are extremely important now you can see there's one here is actually this one's a male he's got wing casings and the females don't so these are all females and there's one male in there and um, now these guys when you're on holiday and you you go into a bathroom, you often see the, the, the cockroaches scurry into darkness. Now, the reason why they're in the bathroom is because even the pest ones are still doing a job. They're actually eating all the dead hair and skin that comes off human bodies. Cockroaches are some of the only animals that are capable of eating and digesting human hair, which does sound a bit disgusting. But they're still cleaning up. They're, they're doing a job. All right. Now, I'm not going to take these guys out because they're super fast. They're not actually very good at climbing plastic. So you can see they're not climbing, trying to climb out. But if I handle these guys, they can end up, you know, dropping them and they can end up um, getting on the floor. I don't want that because I'm in my house. I'm not in the critter room. So I don't want these guys getting up. Let me upside down. Oh. So there we go. Now I do have another type of cockroach I can show you, uh, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> These are um, these are my peppered cockroaches. So similar to the so similar to the um, to the the Madagascan hissing cockroaches. These are a large one that are found in South America. So these guys also have, but the male and female also have the wing casings. But these guys can't fly. Um, so they've evolved. I don't know why they've got still got the, the wing casings, but they've evolved like that. But they just still can't fly. But again, same same thing. Six legs. And um, it's difficult to see on a cockroach the three body parts, just because of obviously this one's got the large uh, winged casing on it. But they do have the head, the thorax, and the abdomen, which is pretty cool. So you might see underneath here they've got small other small little feelers. Now these are called palps. Now the palps are always touching. Uh, objects. So along with the feelers, feeling around, the palps are also doing the same thing. But the, the palps on the bottom are actually feeling to see if it's edible. So he's touching my fingers and he's saying, is that edible? Um, no, so it wouldn't bite me. Okay. Um, but if it was on a plant or something, it would um, say, um, you know, yeah, I'll eat that. And it'll start munching on it. Now, do you guys want to hear a cockroach joke? Right, there was two cockroaches and it was in, they were in a bakery and they were sitting on a baguette and one cockroach said to the other one, hey, I thought I was the only cockroach in town. And the other one said, no, nah, I was born and bred here. <laughs> right, moving on. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's, uh, that's the peppered roaches. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. So we'll uh, say goodbye to him. These ones aren't very good at climbing plastic. This is like asking kissing cockroaches, the ones that you've got to uh, watch for because they're good at climbing. So that's cockroaches. Um, but obviously we do get lots of other types of insects. Um, we, we've got ants, which obviously drew a picture of an ant there. Bees and butterflies, ladybirds, um, beetles, lots and lots of, of, of other, other types of insects that can be found all over the world. Um, one of my favourites that I like to keep uh, insect wise are um, excellent at camouflage so they can um, you know, mimic certain objects so it makes it difficult because insects are actually the, the, you know, right at the bottom of the food chain so they're a food source for lots of other animals like birds and mammals so they've have adapted over the years to become 
like camouflage. So in here we've got one that's upside down. So you've got to be really delicate with this one because he is delicate. Okay, you're going to come in a bit closer, Mackenzie, and have a look at this one. This is, um, <clears throat> is our sticking set. Okay, so this is actually an Indian stick insect and probably a most common in, uh, stick insect. A lot of people uh, get these as pets. Um, if you get one as a pet, you'll have them for life <laughs> because they um, basically they reproduce on their own. So they can produce uh, lots of eggs and then you've got lots of little baby stick insects. Um, and they're easy to look after. You feed them on privet or... Um, bramble leaves so the leaves that stay green all year round um so yeah so he looks a bit like a stick like a walking stick if you look closely you can still see the three body parts so the head the thorax which is where all the legs are attached to and the segmented abdomen you see the lines on it and these guys are pretty neat they've got little red flashes underneath their arm but during the day, these guys will stay really, really still. So they pretend to be a stick. Uh, they can even move in the wind. So when the, the wind's blowing the leaves and the branches, these guys will do the same thing, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, a majority of birds and things um, don't spot them So they, if they stay really still. But if they're moving around like this one is, there's a good chance a bird will, will gobble them up uh, and, and eat him. So going back to these guys actually lay eggs. Okay, uh, but not all insects lay eggs. The cockroaches that we were talking about um, earlier on are actually life bearers, so they actually give birth life. So that's when you say you shouldn't really stand on a cockroach because if you stand on a gravid female, there's a good chance she's going to squirt out all her little baby cockroaches and they're going to scurry around. So you're dealing with more than just one. Um, so yeah, it's not best idea to actually stand on cockroaches. So a lot of insects have different life uh, cycles. Uh, the most famous insect life cycle would probably be the butterfly. So butterflies start off as an egg and then they hatch into a caterpillar. The caterpillar will then munch on all the plants, get really big and fat, and then he'll put himself into a cocoon where he'll morph into a butterfly. Now the butterfly is the most beautiful stage of, a, of, of obviously the butterfly's life, but it's also the shortest. Um, only a couple of weeks, if they're lucky, they will be a butterfly and then the cycle all starts again. And obviously a lot of insects do have that kind of same kind of cycle. Uh, things like beetles start off as a larvae and then they, they uh, morph into a, a beetle. So yeah, so insects are fascinating creatures. Um, my favourite insect, if you want to know, is actually a praying mantis. Unfortunately, I don't have any praying mantis at the moment because praying mantis don't live very long. You're lucky if you get a praying mantis for a year. Um, my praying mantis only seem to, 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 I end up getting males and they end up only living for six or seven months. Um, that's usually the lifespan of them. So, but they are really, really cool. Uh, and they're good mimic insects as well, because they'll often well, sometimes camouflage them as themselves as plants so that they can ambush their prey because the prey doesn't realize that there's a, uh, a praying mantis that looks like a flower. So there we go, yeah. Pretty cool, pretty neat, yeah? Right, so we'll put him back. Now I am gonna set you guys um, some homework. What I want to see is I've named a few. You can use Google if you want, um, but hopefully I've given you enough uh, you know, information in this video um, that I want you to go back uh, once we've finished here and I want you to give me five insects, okay? So you tell me five insects. Get your mum or dad or yourself to type it in the comment section in this video and I will check over them and see if, um, if you're right. And then also want you to draw a picture and I want you to draw a picture of your favourite insect. So it could be any insect that you can think of. Uh, make it nice and colourful. Uh, and I will share the, 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 them on, on uh, my uh, live stream tomorrow uh, for you guys to, to see. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. Let's maybe do one more. Well, I'll take out these. Will I take out these fast cockroaches? Will I take them out? Yeah, take, yeah? Them, take them out. Take them out, okay. 
Right, okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna, see, see, oh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this actually. Um, what would take? Because I'm not sure, because these guys are pretty fast. So I'm not sure if I really want to take. Oh! Mom! Dad spilled the cockroaches! Uh, right, guys, I'm gonna have to go. We'll catch you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. See you later.